is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin again tonight with the hard fact that from somewhere in the back streets of Lebanon, violent men are still able to manipulate their captives and cause deep anxiety in the capitals of otherwise powerful nations. In Lebanon today, the deadline to kill the American hostage, Joseph Sicipio, was reportedly extended by the men who say they are holding him. Reports as well that a deadline had been set for the execution of the British hostage, Terry Waite. But late this afternoon, the group in whose name that particular threat had been issued denied it had said any such thing. The threat to Mr. Sicipio has not been withdrawn. Once again, there have been warnings that if Israel wants to save American hostages in Lebanon, Israel must return the Lebanese Shiite religious leader Abdul Karim Obeid, who Israel kidnapped last Friday. This so-called extension of the deadline was heard by Sisipio's brother Thomas at the family home in Pennsylvania early this afternoon. Today, the handwritten statement from the Revolutionary Justice Organization delivered to a Lebanese newspaper said that Sisipio, the comptroller at the American University in Beirut until he was kidnapped, had been granted a 48-hour reprieve until Thursday morning due to what the statement called friendly appeals as well as a moving plea from Sisipio's wife. She was seen on Lebanese television. Please, don't execute him, please. That's what I want to tell them, that's all. Mrs. Sisipio also tried to give her husband courage. All I ask you is to keep your hope high and don't ever, ever lose faith in God. As far as the U.S. government is concerned, Joseph Sisipio is alive. And so throughout last night and today, he's become the focus of yet another energetic American effort to do something. The Bush administration has been turning to everyone, the Israelis, the Syrians, other Arabs, the Soviets, even the Iranians. Our first reporter from ABC's Brit Hume, who's at the White House. Again today, the limousines rolled up to the White House, bringing Secretary of State Baker and other cabinet officers to meet with the president on the situation in Lebanon. But White House sources said intensive diplomacy, not military action, was the focus. And the Soviet Union, they said, was trying to help, having been asked to by, among others, Under Secretary of State John Kelly, who met in Stockholm today with a senior Soviet diplomat. We had a brief exchange with the Soviet representatives on the subject of Colonel Higgins and on the hostages in Lebanon. Certainly the Soviets appeared to be in a position to help, with Foreign Minister Shevardnadze meeting in Tehran today with Iranian President Rafsanjani and other top Iranian officials. Senior U.S. officials, however, warned against giving either the Soviets or the Iranians credit for the Sisipio reprieve, saying Syria and other Middle Eastern governments played a greater role. At the White House today, presidential spokesman Fitzwater refused to say Mr. Bush's statement last night urging, quote, all parties in the Mideast to free hostages was aimed at Israel. Sources said privately the statement had been deliberately worded to permit that interpretation without directly pressuring or criticizing Israel. Fitzwater also said the president telephoned the Pope today to seek his help in having the body of Colonel Higgins returned if, of course, his death is confirmed. Despite that, Fitzwater said the president is not treating this situation as a crisis. In view of his actions and all the activity here the past two days, the nation and perhaps the world could be forgiven for thinking otherwise. Peter? Fred, help us with something. Over at the Pentagon, Bob Zelnick tells us that the president was given some options of targets in the Bekaa Valley in eastern Lebanon, in West Beirut, which is a heavily populated civilian area, and Karg Island, which is an Iranian oil terminal off the coast of Iran. True, and were they rejected? Well, my understanding is that the military option has been rejected. All military options have been rejected for the moment. I think, Peter, though, that that situation might well change if something happens to Mr. Sisipio or any of the other American hostages. The death of one American military man whose death had been reported earlier is one thing, but what might it turn out to be or look like a series of a serial uh, killing uh, would be quite another for the president to deal with in political terms. Okay, Britt, thanks very much. We'll get back to you. There are, of course, other Americans held hostage in Lebanon, and the statement from Joseph Sisipio's kidnappers today included a picture of another U.S. hostage, 58-year-old Edward Tracy. He's an author. He was kidnapped in October of 1986. The statement that went with the picture said nothing about Tracy. When we come back, the confusion about the fate of Colonel William Higgins. Criticism of Israel for its role in the hostage crisis and the fate of Colonel William Higgins. If he is dead, the Pentagon wants to know when he died.
and so does his wife. Here's ABC's Bob Zelnick. Major Robin Higgins left the Pentagon today, insisting through a spokesman that she still could not conclusively identify her husband on the tape and could not be certain he's dead. Intelligence and FBI officials also reviewed the tape today. There is an effort undergoing uh, or ongoing right now to try to do further analysis on that tape, but we don't have any results from it yet. Senior intelligence officials say privately there's no doubt that Higgins was in fact the person on the tape but they would like to be able to learn when he died, whether he was killed yesterday or, as some reports suggested, last July in retaliation for the shootdown of an Iranian Airbus. To do that, they need his body. And while many here doubt Higgins will ever be returned, in New York today, U.N. Secretary General Perez de Cuellar ordered a top official to the Mideast in an effort to recover the body of Higgins, who was posted with U.N. forces at the time of his abduction. The outrage of the whole international community is such that I think they have to think twice before committing another crime. Searching for definitive answers about the Higgins tape permits the U.S. to delay a decision on how to retaliate at a time when most agree there are no good options. It also gives diplomacy a chance to work, sparing the lives of other hostages, avoiding a situation where the U.S. might be forced to act. Bob Zelnick, ABC News at the Pentagon. Well, there's been reaction everywhere today because so many people do believe that Colonel Higgins was hanged. The British called it cold-blooded murder. The French said it was revolting. The Japanese, shameful and inhuman. An advisor to the PLO chairman, Yasser Arafat, denounced Higgins' murder. But the PLO, like some governments, including Britain and Sweden, said Israel was partly to blame. And an Iranian newspaper accused the West of a double standard, saying the West condemns the killing of Colonel Higgins only because he was a blue-eyed American. The organization Hezbollah in Lebanon, which has influence over the many factions which are holding foreign hostages, rejected the Israeli offer today to trade Shiite hostages in Israel for Western hostages in Lebanon. And today the Israelis have again been trying to make the point that their kidnapping of a Lebanese Shiite religious leader was a legitimate action in their war against terrorism. Here's ABC's Don Cladstrom. The symbolism was striking. Prime Minister Yitzhak Shamir laying a wreath at the grave of Zev Jabotinsky, the spiritual father of militant Zionism, honoring the man who stood for a strong Israel, which must be defended. Today, Israel's leaders were defending their country from criticism. Prime Minister Shamir told U.S. Ambassador William Brown and visiting GOP Chairman Lee Atwater that Israel's kidnapping of Sheikh Obeid should not be blamed for Colonel William Higgins's death. The majority of the public opinion all over the world understand that our purpose is to free hostages. But Friday's kidnapping of Sheikh Obeid, according to sources here, was conducted without Washington's being notified in advance. This because the operation was aimed at securing the release of Israeli soldiers held captive in Lebanon. Based on that, sources say the Israeli cabinet, in approving the kidnapping, considered only that Israeli POWs might be the target of terrorist reprisals, not Western hostages. The cabinet vote was 11 to 1. The lone dissenter has been told not to discuss it. But Foreign Minister Moshe Aarons, who appeared on an Israeli radio broadcast beamed to the entire Middle East, denied Israel had acted irresponsibly. I think anybody who claims that uh, he knows how to predict uh, just how these crazed fanatics are going to act uh, is uh, giving himself a little more credit than, than is due. Israel's offer to exchange its prisoners for Western hostages is still on the table. Indirect negotiations are said to be underway. But officials here say that until they get a positive response, Sheikh Obeid will not be released. Don Cladstrip, ABC News, Tel Aviv. In a moment, we'll have the rest of the day's news. Congress says no to an important presidential appointment. And later in the broadcast, the economics of drugs on the American agenda. The profits much too great to resist. And finally tonight, a one-of-a-kind car dealership in Michigan. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings.